I always like to look at the link between things, cause and effect, the association between things, the relationship between common problems and medications and their side effects. And I think the best topic to demonstrate this is with the cardiovascular system. So you have various problems with your heart, okay? You have arrhythmias, you have high cholesterol, even though from my viewpoint, that's not a problem unless you're doing high carbs. But when you're dealing with things like atherosclerotic placking, you have a combination of fibrin, which is the protein, you have cholesterol, and you have calcium. And then you have clots, okay, a thrombus. And there's various medications to thin the blood to reduce your chance of clotting. And then you have like uh, tachycardia, which is high pulse rate, and another condition called hypertension, which is high blood pressure. And each separate problem comes with its own medication, its own treatment. And of course, each medication has its own side effects. But with cardiovascular conditions, they don't really go very deep as far as causation. They might say that heart disease is caused by high blood pressure, or they might say that heart disease is caused by a clot or a buildup of cholesterol, or heart disease is caused by arrhythmias. They're not going deeper. They might mention lifestyle, diet, too much salt, eating fatty foods, but that's about it. What I want to talk about is electrolytes in relationship to the cardiovascular system. So we have electrolytes, which are um, like potassium, magnesium, calcium, and sodium. And these electrolytes really control the nerves and the muscles and the relationships. And the heart is a muscle and it has nerves that control it. And it has even a pacemaker that controls the rhythm. And what you're going to find out very shortly, there's this huge connection between electrolyte imbalances and cardiovascular function. And what I mean by electrolyte imbalances, you should never just rely on one electrolyte or take it for a long period of time. You can take it for a short period of time uh, to correct an imbalance, but you have to realize these electrolytes uh, work in a balance. In other words, if you have too much potassium, for example, you're going to have a deficiency of magnesium. And a deficiency of potassium could also be related to a deficiency of magnesium. And so some of these electrolytes have a direct and indirect effect on each other. You also have the relationship between calcium and magnesium. If one goes up, the other one might go down. You have another relationship between potassium and sodium. If you're consuming a lot of salt, for example, uh, you're going to need more potassium. And if you have enough potassium, you'll be protected by a lot of sodium. And then there's even a relationship between calcium and sodium. Calcium can even block sodium, as in a calcium channel blocker, which is a medication for arrhythmias and blood pressure. And so some of these uh, medications for heart conditions actually either block or increase an electrolyte. So before I get into the relationships, I want to just uh, first talk about arrhythmias, okay? This is an abnormal heart rhythm. The heart should normally be in rhythm, and when it's not in rhythm, you can have a lot of issues with pooling blood and clotting and all sorts of issues. But what you need to know is that you really need all of the electrolytes in the right balances for everything to work. Because you can have an arrhythmia problem with a deficiency of potassium, as well as an excess of potassium. You can have arrhythmias if there's not enough magnesium, or if there's too much magnesium. You can have arrhythmias if you have not enough calcium or too much calcium. And so the key is the sweet spot. So if I were to tell you uh, too much calcium causes heart attacks, for example, and I just did a video on that, of course, you're going to be avoiding calcium. But what you have to realize is that you also have the problem with deficiencies. So you need the balance of all the electrolytes. And of course, the cool thing about getting your electrolytes from food primarily is that you get these electrolytes in the correct balance. And if you're going to take electrolyte powder, of course, make sure it's in the right balance. So the next thing I want to tell you is uh, the relationship between potassium and magnesium. I already mentioned that too much potassium can create a magnesium deficiency. Now, you might be saying, well, how am I going to get too much potassium? Is it just from consuming too much potassium? Um, actually, probably not. It's going to be more from the soil. Most farming uh, methods now are focused on just three minerals, okay? NPK. N nitrogen, P, phosphorus, and K is potassium. 
So if you're going to just use NPK in the soils and you're going to put a lot in there, uh, you're going to create a magnesium deficiency. And magnesium has an anti-thrombotic effect. In other words, it helps to reduce thrombosis or clotting. Magnesium is incredible for the heart. It's good for arrhythmias. It is a natural calcium channel blocker, which is another medication they use for um, high blood pressure and arrhythmias. And so unfortunately, a lot of our food that we consume is very, very deficient in magnesium because the soils are deficient in magnesium. And the plants, even though they have chlorophyll, that green stuff, which is made out of magnesium, is usually low in magnesium. And I do want to say also, if you're low in potassium, that can create a magnesium deficiency. So again, we just need the right amounts of each. But since I'm going to be starting a channel on growing food and plants, I'm going to be talking a lot about this NPK and how it just throws off the balance of all these other minerals that are needed. So there's some fascinating data in having enough magnesium and preventing clots. There's other great data on having enough magnesium and preventing arrhythmias or palpitations. I mean, it just blows me away that some cardiologists, they, they put you on a medication to regulate the heartbeat, but they're not looking at the electrolytes. And please don't come off your medication from this video. Check with your doctor before making any changes. The reason I'm doing this video is to educate you so you can then educate your doctor, or at least bring up questions that need to be brought up. And then we have this, uh, this other symptom of high blood pressure, which has been hugely significantly associated with a potassium deficiency, with a magnesium deficiency. I mean, even the FDA recently came out and it, are allowing um, people to use the magnesium claim for helping decrease the risk of high blood pressure. Of course, it has to be phrased in a certain way. So high blood pressure can come from low potassium, low magnesium, and high calcium, okay? We'll come back to that. And this is why a common medication that's used for high blood pressure is calcium channel blockers. What does a calcium channel blocker do? It blocks calcium to help you lower blood pressure. It also helps with atrial fibrillation because too much of one electrolyte can throw off other electrolytes. Now, what's interesting as a side effect from calcium channel blockers, I think if I'm not mistaken, is 70% of people that take this are at risk for a side effect of edema because your lymphatic system is dependent on your vascular system. And if you're going to inhibit calcium, you can many times inhibit the muscular contraction that is supposed to help push this fluid and you can end up with edema in your lower legs as a side effect from the calcium channel blockers. And of course, another side effect from the calcium channel blockers is low calcium. Now, remember when I said low calcium can be a cause of um, heart arrhythmias? And then we get another group of medications that um, are diuretics that are used to help lower blood pressure. I mean, this just blows me away. Like there's a, a diuretic called HCTZ that has direct side effects of a potassium deficiency, a magnesium deficiency, a sodium deficiency, and not a deficiency, but an excess of calcium. In other words, it causes you to retain calcium. Now, remember when I just mentioned high blood pressure and that can be caused by not enough potassium, not enough magnesium, and too much calcium? So diuretics could actually create high blood pressure indirectly. And two other side effects are very, very surprising from these diuretics. One is it can increase your uh, risk for diabetes because it can increase your blood sugars. And two, it can increase your lipids as in cause high cholesterol. But don't worry, we have statins for that. But of course, the statins have a side effect of increasing blood pressure as well as increasing blood sugars as well. So anytime you have the treatment for something causing part of the same problem, to me, you don't have the optimum solution. A solution shouldn't give you additional problems. And then we have um, things that thin the blood, like uh, warfarin. So warfarin blocks vitamin K1, but it has a very severe and significant side effect of causing vascular calcification. So that can definitely increase blood pressure. Now, there's also a, something called a beta blocker, and uh, that has to do with 
reducing adrenaline, okay? Part of the sympathetic nervous system to help reduce blood pressure. But there's two interesting side effects. One is that it can cause a potassium deficiency, okay? And two, it can cause a magnesium deficiency. Now, both magnesium and potassium deficiencies can increase cortisol and adrenaline. I mean, potassium and magnesium are the physiological tranquilizers. They relax you. They decrease stress. They help you sleep. And so the medication to help you lower blood pressure can actually end up causing more adrenaline or cortisol. This just doesn't make sense to me. And then we get to another medication called an ACE inhibitor. And this has to do with um, affecting certain hormones that can affect blood fluids in your body, retention of fluids, as well as blood pressure. So an ACE inhibitor targets more blood pressure issues. But the problem is the side effect from that is the retention of potassium and the depletion of magnesium. So again, these th solutions for cardiovascular problems really throw off your electrolytes in, in direct and indirect ways. So in summary, a very, very important thing to know about a healthy cardiovascular system is the balance of the electrolytes in their right ratios. And you need to look at the big picture. You need to ask questions that dig deep into the underlying root causes in certain parts of heart disease. And the big takeaway is that any solution that gives you a bigger problem is not the optimum solution. So if you want to know the best foods to support a healthy cardiovascular system, I put that video up right here. Check it out.